1954, my father was uh, a, a cook at the federal prison in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. Through a series of things that have happened, he wanted a, um, a chance to be a steward, which was a promotion. And uh, there was nothing happening. And they said, well, Mac, the only, only stewardship open is on Alcatraz. My dad said, I'll take it. There was some conflict in our family over this, but oh, that's another story. So he moved out in 1954, and we stayed in the Pennsylvania area for another year because my sister had to graduate from high school. We locked up the house. We didn't sell it. Oh, that's another story. The house in Pennsylvania, it's still there. Anyhow, we moved to Alcatraz. Now, one of the things about this community is that you have to realize that Alcatraz is a mile and a half from San Francisco. It is 12 acres. Of those 12 acres, five acres are what we lived on. The rest are the prison society, which include the industrial, the uh, waste management, and all the things that make that prison. On those five acres, there were 300 people who lived worked and went to school. About 50 children that would go to school every day. Now, have you ever heard the words, Prudy, hurry up, you're gonna miss the boat. <laughs> yeah, but that was what happened to me a lot. <laughs> to go to school on a boat, we did not have school. They tried to make this community as regular as possible for children. So, we lived in a bungalow there were two apartment buildings, rather large. There was a, a, a two house for lieutenant and uh, captain. And then there was also a dwelling for single <coughs> guards and uh, people uh, married without children. So there were a lot of people. We had a canteen, a small store. We had a post office. And we had a two lane bowling alley. All right. Now, to make things kind of normal, as soon as a child came on the island, there was a wall that went along the, the top of the, the parade grounds where we live. And they had dirt brought in. And Captain Bergen made sure that every child had a space of that size to plant whatever they wanted to. Now, it was really funny because you could see Zinnias, raspberry, corn, marigolds, roses, but what the child decided to, to plant was their garden. They painted our names on this wall. In 1975, after the, the, the prison actually closed in 63, but I was able to go back and I had a chance to go down and the, the wall was very old ground grown with plants, but somebody said, we see this nature. Was this a pet cemetery? I said, no, no. And they moved away in 1975, and there was my name, Prudy McCreary. It was like, ugh. <laughs> I really was here. Oh, wow. <laughs> so this is a pretty typical morning. Um, our legs out. We had a bungalow, and so I would eat breakfast looking out on the bay with a steep incline that had steps going down, but it was barbed wire. We were surrounded by barbed wire as much as the prisoners were. Barbed wire and razor wire. The difference being we could leave, they could not. We could cross that one and a half miles, they could not. Um, well, I said run for the boat, go across the, the parade, go down steps, go uh, down the first floor of the apartment building, and then you wait while the guard up there with the Tommy guns are guarded, are waiting to open up the gate that allows you, like I said, you, we were gated. You went nowhere without having somebody else let you through another gate. Get down to the, down to the dock, onto the boat, and off we go to school. Now when I say boat, I, some of you, I'm sure, have been to Alcatraz. You've taken the trip, you've been on that nice, big, three-story ferry kind of thing. All right, think school bus, 
sized boat. 30 people under the deck and 20, uh, 10 or 20 had up in the guard area. They, they separated us. And often they would use the, uh, the boat to transport prisoners. Prisoners actually did get to leave, but most often came on. And so it was a really small boat and it would, uh, it, in bad weather, it was rocky. And then, and then you'd hear the announcement. Children, take your seats. We need to increase our speed. Okay. Out the window, we can see here comes an aircraft carrier. Little boat, big aircraft carrier. Now the picture. We have to increase our speed to get past this aircraft carrier because if we get caught in the wake of it, we'd be tipped over. So here we are, a boatload of kids, and the pilot is playing chicken with an aircraft carrier. <laughs> That's the way to start a school day, yeah. On the other hand, at the end of the school day, I, no, I can't stay after school. I'm an Alcatraz kid and I have to catch my boat. <laughs> yeah, think that might have been used a couple times? Okay, sure. Well, the thing is, the boat ran every two hours. And if we didn't get on, get on it, we had a, a very long wait and uh, a phone call to the parents, which was not always fun. Um, phone calls, interesting. We had one phone to the mainland on the island. And I don't know how many of you here are at the age at college where you did phone duty for your dorm, but that's what it was like. People would take turns sitting at the phone, and then if something came in from the mainland, if you were with your mom or dad, usually the moms did it, you had to go and knock on the apartment building and say, you have a, lot, you have a phone call from your aunt so-and-so. And so that was the one phone. We did have phones that connected the buildings, but only one to the mainland. Um, we had movies. We had movies on Saturday night. We had the movies that were shown on Friday night to the prisoners. We got them on Saturday night. <laughs> what is this sequence of events all about? Well, they wanted to make sure that if the reel was going to break, it would break for us, not for them, because you don't have a room full of prisoners sitting around waiting to have a movie spliced. There's too much of a chance of a riot. What are kids gonna do, throw popcorn? Yeah, all right, so we got them on Friday night. That also had an effect on water usage. I said, typical day if you want to take a bath, mm. everything had to be brought onto the island. I'm standing here in front of a water barge. All right, so water's getting a little low. Who's going to take the bath? Me or up in the guardhouse? That was the choice that had to be made. You had to make those choices because that was the industry that was on the island and that had to be to come first. Um, <coughs> there was so much that happened there. Uh, like, did you see the prisoners? Of course we saw the prisoners. They were the people who picked up the garbage. They delivered the, uh, the laundry. They, uh, we would see them on a dock. We would uh, talk to them sometimes. We aren't supposed to, but we did. Of course, we could. Of course, you do that. Um, we had a church there. One of the apartments had a church. Uh, had a, the top floor was Protestant, Catholic service first, Protestant uh, Sunday school next, and um, then the church service, and then they also had Jewish services there. I got my first and only perfect attendance Bible at that Sunday school. Where else was I going to go on <laughs> Come on. So I just want to say thank you so much. And the next time you go to the island, remember that this is a community that after we children are gone, that community doesn't get a second chance. It never will even though the Park Service is doing a great job in building it up. But when, it, when we're gone, it's gone. Thank you.